Welcome back to another video in the series where we help your child prepare for that upcoming Kent test. Now, in this video, we're looking at nonverbal reasoning and specifically sequence type questions. So having a look at the question on the screen right now, we notice we are missing one square. Now, uh, sequences can go left to right or right to left. It doesn't matter in which way we look at it, which is our my first top tip. Now, my second top tip is probably my biggest tip really for all nonverbal reasoning, which is to just focus on one thing at a time. Most people try to process everything at once and therefore fall into some traps or make a mistake. But if we just break down this question into one feature changing in the sequence at a time and build up an answer, we're almost guaranteed to get it right. So let me just demonstrate exactly how that's done for you. So we've got three features here. We've got the dot, we've got the gray square, and we've got the kind of three quarter circle Pac-Man-y looking thing. So let's focus firstly then perhaps on the dot. Let's focus on the dot. Now, because the... Uh, box in the sequence is missing quite near the start, I'm actually going to look from right to left because I get a bit more of the sequence to kind of understand the pattern before I'm missing one here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start this end. Let's focus on the dot. So the dot, dot is in the bottom right. Then it's a bit further towards the middle, but not quite the middle. Then it's the middle, then it's missing, and then it's in the top left. So quite clearly that dot is moving in diagonal pattern across the square. Now, the most, the only logical place it could be next is between the middle and the top left. So somewhere kind of around here. And what we can do, which is a really, really good um, strategy, is now just get rid of answers that don't do that. Okay, as you can see, we can get rid of B and we can get rid of E. And this strategy here of using deduction and one feature at a time is such an efficient way to get these questions right. And with practice, you can become very quick at them. So the second feature I'd like to focus on now is the uh, three quarter circle. And I noticed that it's clearly rotating. We've just got to work out what that rotation is. So again, from right to left, it seems to be that the missing gap is here. Then it's rotated 90 degrees uh, anti-clockwise. It's rotated 90 degrees anti-clockwise again. So it makes sense that the missing gap next time is going to be around here. So again, I can get rid of any answers that don't have the three quarter circle in that orientation. So this one does. C does, but D doesn't. All right, so we're down to two answers. If you run out of time right now, you've got a 50-50 chance of getting it right, which is amazing. The final feature that we haven't looked at, if I get rid of my markings here, is the gray square. So let's try and work out what that's doing as well. So it's in the top left, then it's in the top right, then it's in the bottom right. Okay, so clearly, again, it's rotating around the square corners like this. So it goes left, right, right, clockwise. The next logical place for it to be is here. So we want a nice grayed out square in the bottom left. It makes sense with our sequence because look, it comes full circle around back to the top left. So bottom left is what we're looking for. We've only got two answers. It's not A, but it is C. Now, parents, before I go any further, if you are tuning in because your child is going to be sitting the 2023 Kent test next year and you're looking for some extra help this year, then do get in touch. We're offering a free first week at the moment to all new signups. Let's jump into question two, shall we? Know what to do now. We know to focus on one feature and we know to use deduction. So perhaps we can go a bit quicker. If you want to beat me to it, then why not pause the video and have a go? Right, so in this one, what should we focus on first? I think we should focus on the shading because it's quite clearly from this going gray, white, gray, white, gray. So it's going to be gray. So I can straight away get rid of the two, the white shaded ones. Now, next up, what's going on with these lines? So we've got three lines here. Then we've got two lines, then something's missing. Then we've got three lines, then we've got two lines. So it looks like it's going to be a pattern that goes three, two, one, three, two, one. And it can't be going back to three, otherwise it would go three, two, three, and then it'd be three again randomly too. So the only logical solution here is it is going three, two, one. And if we look at the answers, it's either one or nothing. So it's certainly not nothing and it can't be three because it's in none of the answers. So it must be one. So let's get rid of D because it doesn't have anything in it at all. Now, what, what are we missing? Sometimes if you don't know what feature to look at, you can just look at the answers that are left and see what's different about them. And they're both rotated in a different way. So that's clearly the feature we haven't sorted out yet. Let's have a look at this. So it's pointing this way, then it's pointing down, then it's missing. Then it's pointing this way, and then it's pointing this way. So it's quite unfamiliar, isn't it? Normally we think of like 90 degree turns or 45 degree, whereas this is turning a bit more than 90 degrees, as we can tell between the, these two. This is turning 90 degrees and another 45 degrees each time, which of course totals to 135 degrees. So we're having 135 degree clockwise rotations. Let's see if we can do the same from this figure to work out what this one would look like. If it rotated 90 degrees, it'd be pointing left. But we know it's more than that. 
So funnily enough, we can, without even drawing it in, we can solve it because it's not A. We've just, we've just proved that it's not A. And actually B, if we think about it, if it rotates a little bit more, it is going to look, look, look like B. So again, one feature at a time, deduction, we solved it, easy peasy. Let's have a look at the next one. Guys, I think it's time to go faster. We've got this, one feature at a time, deduction, easy peasy. So first thing I noticed, and I'm looking right to left again, because we're missing the first one, is we've got this kind of dotted line that goes that way, a solid line that goes that way. Dotted line that goes that way, solid line that goes that way. So the next one has to be a dotted line that goes that way. That's just the pattern. And something amazing happens now. Because look, that was gone. That's gone. That's gone. We're down to two answers already. Let's see if we can find out something else. So I tell you what we shouldn't do. We shouldn't focus on the shape in the middle. And I'm wondering if anyone can work out why before I say so. Why shouldn't we look at the shape in the middle? Well, the answer is simple. I very quickly noted that the two answers that we've got left both have the exact same triangle in the middle. So clearly it's going to be a triangle in the middle. There's no point in me working that out. What is different about them though? Well, the difference is in this one, the dotted line goes over the triangle and in this one, it goes underneath the triangle. So let's just see if we can work out a pattern there. So in the first one, it goes over, so over, over. And the second one, it goes U for under. Then it goes over, then it goes under. So it must be going over. That makes sense next. Therefore it's not E. And it must be C. On to the final question. A nice tricky one to finish up with. Again, if you're enjoying this content, do leave a comment below. See if you can beat us to the answer. Leave us a like. And even if you're feeling really nice, perhaps you could share the video as well. It goes a long way for us and it helps us reach new people. So, okay, this question. What's going on here? Well, at least we've got it from left to right. A nice traditional sequence. We're just missing the last one. Uh, so we've got some dots. They seem The dots seem to be moving and uh, kind of around the square. They also seem to be shaded very differently. So let, let's focus on one feature at a time so we don't get overwhelmed. First thing I'd like to do is think of the dots as kind of making a little square themselves. And the whole square is moving around. Um, as you can see, it's in the top right, then it's in the top left, then it's in the bottom left, then it's in the bottom right. So actually, it's done a full rotation around that square. So it makes sense that it's gonna be back in the top right. So I know the four circles are gonna be here and we can work out the shading after we've got rid of B. And actually we can get rid of E because there's no evidence to suggest that there's ever anything but four circles. So that's quite cool. All right, let's look at the shading. So we've got two white and two black. Let's just focus on the black. We've got two black and we've got one black and we've got zero black. Then it seems to reset back to four. Now it looks like it's just a sequence going down that resets back to four when it gets to zero. So the next logical solution here is that it's gonna be three colored in black. Can we solve it from that information alone? Let's have a look. Well, that's got two in black, not that one. This has got nothing again, which I don't think would make any sense to come just too late in the sequence. Would you look at that? Three shaded, we've solved the answer already. Let me know how you thought on that question and uh, tune in tomorrow for another video.